Welcome back to Naval Action and to episode 6 of A Letter to the King. Just a reminder, A Letter to the King is my attempt to capture PvP 1 Euros ebb and flow of the Biff and the Bash and all the good PvP that's going on on the server. Last week, episode 5, I think was the bloodiest week in history. Episode 6 had its fair bloodshed in, um, but there was lots of other stuff going on. Let's remind ourselves where we were at the start of play. So this is um, at the close of last weekend, if you like. Um, the Spanish had pushed all the way up here and grabbed a big lump of land around there. And I was expecting them to come down south of the Yucatan and start pushing the Brits down here. Uh, our pesky pirate friends were causing carnage around Jamaica, which has now been renamed to Pirate Bay. Um, the Dutch had done the dash, and I can confirm they did it by uh, holding a fleet uh, in Ilavash, I think this is, top of Monoggin. Uh, they held a fleet there, and they ran a renome with the best win possible and more speed mods than anything and made it with a couple of minutes to spare. Their fleet came out and joined them and they managed to grab themselves some land up there. Um, an interesting uh, development was the British took, I don't really know how to say this, it's AVES Arves around here. And this will develop into a bit of a story for episode six. Elsewhere, the Brits had pushed uh, out of South Central Cuba and started putting pressure on Portillo and around South Cuba here. The French had just pushed the Brits out of, I always get these two muddled up here, uh, let me get this one right, Port de Pay, uh, but the Brits had taken St. Nick and the Americans had come tally hoeing down Florida and given the pirates a good smack in and really cleaned up uh, this uh, spit here, the Florida Florida's spit, um, and had made a little foothold um, in in the Bahamas. So I think that's pretty much the state of play. Now the good news, uh, one of the criticisms I get every now and again is I don't know everything that's going on. Um, I know I think I do, but I don't. Um, but I've now got, um, let me have a little think, I've got a Dutch person giving me a bit of insight uh, into the world of the Cloggies. Uh, I've got a pirate giving me some insight into the wonderful carnage that they, they share. Uh, I have someone from France giving me uh, a bit of an insight as to what's going on here. It's a lot noisier than I thought. There's a lot less European Union stuff going on and a lot more biffing, which is good to hear. I don't have anyone from the Danes letting me know what's going on in the, with, with their uh, adventures. And I don't have anyone in uh, the Spanish world telling me what's going on in there. So if, if someone from Spain and someone from the Danes wants to step forward, that'll give me coverage and I'll be able to give a far better account. Uh, I also don't have a Swede. I don't think do I have a Swede. No, I don't think I've got a, a, a Swede helping me out. So let's have a look what's going on. We'll start with a bit of a different theatre this week. We'll start with our Spanish friends. Now, um, Spain had a really busy week last week in the great bloodletting. Now, as far as I'm aware, the Spanish and the Americans haven't got a treaty, haven't got an alliance, but there was a bit of an understanding that this port here was about the last of the Spanish incursions. Um, now, how true that is, I don't know. Uh, like I say, I, I do have some American contacts, but all my contacts are unverified. This is Fox News quality reporting. Uh, they could be telling me all sorts of porkies and I would be oblivious to it. I'm very grateful for their inputs and I trust them as honest men of the sea. Now, the Spanish didn't do what I expected and come tally-hoeing down here. Instead, uh, after a siesta for most of the week, which is very Spanish, um, they booked themselves on a Caribbean island cruise. They went running in uh, around Cayman Brac and Georgetown. 
uh, Little Cayman and Georgetown. Uh, they nicked up uh, the islands around here. Uh, so Cayman, Cayman Brack uh, is a free town, but they took Little Cayman and Georgetown here. Uh, they took a couple of islands off the coast of the Yucatan here, Contoy and Mulgarves, forgive my pronunciation. And there's three islands down here, Triangles and Sandwiches and something else, I don't know what they are. Uh, they took all of those and they took them in a real hurry. Uh, there were flags popping left, right and centre. And um, I was trying to work out where were they going to push? Were they taking these islands so they could push and put pressure here? Were they taking these islands so they could push and put pressure here? Well, we never really found out because, and I'm not sure which clans were involved, which of the British clans were involved. I was involved in a couple of them, which was just a loose affiliation. Um, but a million Brit flags popped in one night. There must have been about, well, I say a million, it was about 10 flags. Uh, which resulted in a couple of ports being taken and the next day another six flags. But basically the British went no and rapidly retook all these ports. Um, I was involved in grabbing up these ones here. Uh, they were undefended mostly. There was a little bit of screening and annoyance fleets going on outside, but no substantial resistance. Um, there was one poor chap... Um, and, and this is a great, this is great sort of naval action, um, as it's meant to be. Uh, he'd woken up, he jumps on TeamSpeak. I was in someone else's TeamSpeak. Uh, what's going on? Oh my God, this port bottle's going on. I must, I must jump on. And you could hear him making the breakfast in the background and his missus telling him to go and clean the carport or something. And he sails over here. He's within sight of the cutlasses and he gets jumped, not by Spanish, but by five French players. Now... Here's the nearest French port, uh, and here we are, two and a half hours sailing, so I can only assume they came out of the Freetown, uh, Cayman Brac, uh, not Cayman Brac, sorry, the Freetown around here, um, and uh, they jumped in, the poor chap, and uh, there he was in his third rate, two renommés, a surprise, a frigate, and a Connie up his bum. His missus is screaming at him to get something sorted around the house. He doesn't care. He's, he knows he's going to lose. He's got no chance. They're all faster than him. They, uh, two of them can tag. They can sit on his bum, rip his bum off, grape his crew and steal his ship. Hour and ten minutes he held out. Bless his cotton socks. All to no avail. Anyhow, the Brits um, overreacted like they normally do with the Spanish and subsequently took uh, the vast majority of the Yucatan back uh, for the cost of a single port down here. I suspect there's more to this story to come this week. Uh, I'm not quite sure, like I say. I think what's happening around here is we've got uh, a number of affiliated clans working together somewhat piecemeal. And I don't think either the British or the Spanish in this neck of woods right now are set up for organised port defences. So I think there's this sort of rolling thunder when one of them gets together, they can knock over half a dozen ports. And, you know, I, I popped up to a couple of port defences when the Spanish were taking them and there was like one punter defending the port. And I thought, well, well done. Cheerio and teleport back to Pirate Bay as quickly as I can. So that's what's gone on there. The Spanish um, had a great start to the week and in the end probably lost more than they made. We'll, we'll check that on the tally at the end. The Brits have retaken these small islands and um, strengthened their position in the Yucatan. I think the Spanish still hold Mulgraves or Mugraves or whatever it's called here and they nicked a port down there whose name I can't remember. Bululun. Um... What else happened? So, now all sorts of things were happening down here. So if you remember, I've been making jests somewhat over the last two or three weeks uh, that the European Union have been working out things like sausages and currencies. Well, in actual fact, there's some serious biffo going on over here. So um, the French and the Swedes were really giving each other some loudy with some big fleets and quite vicious fighting. However, a strange thing happened, and I don't know if it was the appearance of the Brits at Arves that perhaps gave the Swedes the chance to do something else. Um, or it was the pressure the Brits were putting on the French and the threat to the Danes. But nonetheless, the Swedes 
Well, they kind of went exploring. They've gone on a bit of a door of the Explorer. And they've picked themselves a port up here. And I do know that the Swedes are to some extent working with the Dutch. Not super duper working together, but I know they've been working together knocking pirates over. They showed me a tally of 100 pirate ships that they've knocked over. Um, they also grabbed a port up here. And a port up here. So the Swedes have gone on a bit of a, a, bit of a, a tour. Now, what will they do? What forces do they bring? We'll have to see. It's kind of interesting. Now they're in these areas. Um, we'll have to see what happens there. I, I'm not quite sure as to how strong they are. I, I know they took a shellacking uh, in the first couple of weeks I was covering things. I know they've been involved in a lot of fights with the French, but now that they've managed to get out of that little sort of land trap that they've really been in down here, It'll be interesting to see what pressure they bring and who they decide to share their disdain with. Will they clock into the Danes? Not so sure that'll happen. I think there might be some form of detente between the Swedes and the Danes. Like I say, I, I don't have uh, ears on the ground there. Um, or will they carry on working with our Dutch friends um, and, and sort of a bit of co-op Viking action and, and sort these pesky pirates out? So... Um, Haiti is looking a bit like a Jason Pollock at the moment. It's got a lot of colour on there. A lot of dots, Aboriginal art. Lots of coloured dots all over the place. Now, the Brits, there was two clans down here. Um, now, just a quick step out. I'm not going to name clans in Letter to the King. Um, I don't do that for uh, a couple of re reasons. Firstly, I can't tell you the name of the Spanish clans that are working up here. I can't tell you which particular British clans uh, are defending or, or working around here. I have knowledge because I work with the Brits. but um, So I, I don't want to get myself involved in what would become the poo fight of me saying what one clan did and what the other clan didn't. So I'm going to stick to nations. I will outside of Letter to the King be doing a thing on clans, uh, hopefully the first one this week, and we'll see how that goes, see if there is a second one. Um, I think most of us who fight in a particular theatre, we know the, the clans in our particular area. The purpose of Letter to the King is to let you know what's going on elsewhere, um, but I don't know the individual names of the great and the mighty sailors who are flinging themselves onto the cannons of others. What I do know is there were two huge fleets here, um, predominantly first-rate uh, first fleets, and indeed the British uh, initially resisted a coordinated attack uh, by the Danes and the French, and I've seen a couple of videos that were up on Reddit where the um, some of the fleets that were taken up against the Brits were close to full first-rate fleets. And I think on at least two or three nights, the, we had total first-rate battles, or near total first-rate battles, that often went down to the expiry of the timer. Um, and whether it be the French who were, who were hurling their Santis and Vicks against the Brits with the Danes screening, or the Danes uh, with the French screening, there was a good three nights of carnage down here. Um, and, and this just brings up a point. Um, really about our collective lunacy. I know for a fact that in areas around here and here, and I suspect over here as well, there are clans that are waking up at four o'clock in the morning to attack a port or defend a port. And all over the world, there's a hundred captains sitting in their underpants at four o'clock in the morning with their befuddled partners tutting away in bed while they're down here in the dressing gown, cup of coffee, AFK sailing to attack a port. They've got a half-assed sandwich made. And the reason it's half-assed is because while you were AFKing, to you keep checking on your screen and you see a circle pop around your ship and you nap yourself and you have to run back and you take your, your half-spread, half a sandwich over, sit down and then spend 40 minutes trying to run away from some bugger who's mounted carronades as chasers. Um, and then there's, I, I know for a fact, there's clans who are waking up at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, SMSing each other, uh, social networking each other, to come and defend in their pixel ships, in our pixel ports, um, against other pixel ships, on maps that we know in perhaps three months with all the new content that's promised, are all going to be wiped. But we don't care. We're mad. We're magnificently mad. 
and the amount of effort people put into defending these ports and taking these ports, the effort they put into raising money so that they can buy fake flags, um, it is uh, it's wonderful lunacy and I applaud it, uh, I do it myself. I'm one of those people who go to work on a Monday morning absolutely knackered because I've been sitting at sea for two hours waiting for someone who didn't come and then getting jumped by three renomes as I go home. Hurrah, I say, for our collective madness. The Brits, Inarves, Aves, Aves, someone will tell me, um, they decided that defence was good but attack was more fun and for a little while they caused bloody mayhem. Um, grabbing up three or four ports that were held by the French, playing run around the island with the French and the intercepting Danes, until eventually in one night the French, uh, again with fantastic fleets, and these fleets, you know, 25 Santis, that's 140 days worth of craft effort have gone into that, uh, managed to push the Brits back out of those ports. And then finally on the following night the Danes in a pretty much 25 versus 25 first rate port attack managed to pull a win off and so the brits should take heart because perhaps that's what's needed in carlisle so well done danes uh, great defense brits huge effort from the french i know at one point early in the week the french were on the knees they were wondering how are they going to be able to handle this um i think it's a bit of a bridge too far to be honest to be holding a port here and, you know, why were the Brits holding a port here? Why not? It's a fantastic bit of PV. That's why you hold a, a port here, because you, you're aggravating your opponents. And how much good PvP did they get out of that? Um, I've seen, like I say, there's, there's two or three videos kicking around if you Google up AVES and the defense of AVES. There's a couple on Reddit. And these are Trafalgar quality biffos. Um, you know, thousands of BR, tens of thousands of BR bashing against each other. There is a question now though with those two big well-equipped British clans no longer in Arves, where will they go? Where will they go? What will they do? Will they go and play Battlefleet Gothica? Or will they go and biff people in other parts of the map yet to be known? And now that the Danes and the French aren't focusing on ours and the, the peril that the Brits brought to them, what does that mean for the Swedes and what does that mean for Haiti? Um, next week will tell us. So there's a reason to subscribe, like up and wait on for episode 7. Meanwhile, the Dutch, if you recall, had made this sprint to Haiti uh, which is just uh, buy shares in Haitian hospitals, is my tip, uh, and ship repairers, and folks who make wooden legs and things. Um, the pirates, the Brits and the Dutch basically played uh, port around. Uh, the Brits eventually lost St. Nick, but they picked up a port uh, down here. Um, the Dutch lost a couple of ports, then won a couple of ports back. Uh, the pirates ended up losing... Um, two or three ports. So now the Dutch hold, I think it's four ports around here. The Brits have managed to push a little bit into Danish territory. And the Pirates, although they've retaken St. Nick and uh, Port. Oh, God, I always get these two wrong. So that's Pap, that's Port of Prince, Port de Pay. Uh, although they've got those back, they've now got. Um, more of this uh, western archipelago, not archipelago, spit uh, held in, in foreign hands and they have this mystery blue square here um, and, and which way that's going to go, who knows, who knows, who knows where the Swedes are going to vent their fury. The Americans, well, after retaking the um, spring break uh, spit over here, um, they were probably the biggest net cappers of the week, pushing down into the Bahamas, um, smashing the pirates um, out of the north side of Cuba, grabbing up a whole bunch of islands here, and also picking off uh, a couple of our, our islands not too far from Mortimer Town, Salinas, and another one I can't remember its name, forgive me, um, were grabbed up last kick by the uh, Americans. Now... I know that there is 
there is outrage uh, in the pirate pubbies. And the pirate pubbies is a strange thing, of course, because the pirates aren't a nation. Um, but nonetheless, they're a grumpy bunch. There's rumours that one of the bigger pirate clans has uh, semi-folded and the remnants have gone back to the Spanish. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I know four or five weeks ago one of the Spanish clans joined the pirates. Whether or not one has now gone the other way, um, time will tell. I personally think this is going to be a hot spot and I reckon that some of the bigger pirate clans are going to get stuck back into the Americans. There is a fair amount of enmity there. There were a lot of battles fought along this stretch of the woods. The, one of the bigger pirate clans is actually an ex-American clan um, that turned pirate. Uh, the sort of the tea party, as, as it were, of uh, the Americans and turned pirate. And I think this is where the most blood will flow next week. And that will be very interesting to see what happens there. Of course, it hasn't all been quiet in Pirate Bay. Um, Thursday night now has become, I think, it's, it's, it's Gankabrit night. And at one point, uh, I'm pretty sure it was my Thursday night or my Friday night, everybody else's Thursday. Um, those of us sailing around Pirate Bay... Uh, I not only had to deal with our regular thorn in the side at the moment, which is hundreds of pirate ships sinking thousands of tons of British ships uh, for, for no other reason than, than shits and giggles, really. Uh, but at one stage, as we were trying to do our little, little fleety missions and trading and so on and so forth, there was stuff in Brit chat basically saying there's a Spanish fleet uh, up off the up off Saint Anne, there's French renommés and consties and trinks off Port Morant. There's Danes floating around. I think they were around Montego Bay, and we had, of course, our our, our new gate uh, sort of room crashes uh, with the pirates who've now been holding Carlisle for this is the third week now. Um, and uh, what a lot of biffo there was. And it was it was chaos, because of course the pirates can join any old side. Um, and there was all sorts of shenanigans going on. Uh, and the Brits, uh, they, they, they did a lot of fighting, so it's fantastic for the PvP. Uh, but you can't win. You can't win, because these guys are gank fleets. They're not looking for fair fights. Neither you should if you're a gank fleet. They're looking to inflict pain, and, and what a lot of pain they did inflict. Later in the day, the Brits got themselves organised and slowly started uh, stamping out these fleets to the point where, you know, bullying was no fun anymore, and they kind of ran away. Um, and um, one of the interesting things is now that the, the, the pirates, I don't know, are they getting cocky? Are they trying to goad the British into a biff? I know the Brits are buying flags every night on this port and uh, that keeps the pirates up at daft o'clock in the morning because the timer that's set on this is, is just a horrible 3, 4 a.m. type timer for most Europeans or somewhere in that order. It's two hours before shutdown. Um, so they have to defend that, of course. There's usually only about 400 people on at this time. Um, and, and no clan other than the pirate clan that's hosting Carlisle right now has got the might to shift 25 Santis. Even if they could bring 25 Santis into that battle, it's going to take, you saw here, Aves took a full week of first-rate fleets to eventually shift it. Um, and with 400 people on, there just isn't a clan other than the pirate clan that is remorsefully holding it. Um, oh, resolutely, remorsefully, sorry, uh, holding it. Um, there's no one else who's quite, who's, who's simply got the muscle to do it. Although, right, and in fact, that's right, in fact, this reminds me, uh, a couple of times um, they brought their Santee fleet out and in a super show of muscle, they just parked it in an arc, in a big banana shape in front of the British capital, uh, Kingston Port Royal. I was half hoping that one of those crazy bonker AI fleets with like 14 Santis and a 73 Vix would come sailing past and some little muppet in a, in a cutter would drag the entire pirate fleet into some sort of AI nightmare, but it, it wasn't to be. We can only hope that happens soon. 
Um, but right at flag fall, and I've, uh, I'll work out what happened uh, for next week's one, because this is literally like an hour before I put Letter to the King together. Um, and as I'm driving home from work and enjoying the wonders that is the Sydney traffic system, um, Savannah Lamar fell. Now, that's on the same timer as Carlisle. And I know that flags have been getting pulled left, right and centre. So I don't know if perhaps the pirates fell asleep or if um, the latest episode of Girls is out or something. But for some reason, uh, the pirates missed this one and the Brits have retaken Savannah Lamar. Maybe the pirates were getting ready to uh, recapture the bananas. I don't know. We don't know. I'll find out for next week. So, uh, let's just have a look at what's happened because it's crazy bonkers. We've got, this is like the Rainbow Coalition here now. Every man and his dog. Uh, I would advise the Americans, get yourself and the, and, the, and the Spanish, get yourself a dot, lads. Don't miss out on Haiti, the, the, the Rainbow Nation of uh, PVP1. Um, Cuba's a basket case. Uh, the Bahamas is turning decidedly American. The Spanish have started the biff up here. Uh, the Brits have replied. The French and the Swedes and the Danes are now Brit free. And uh, let's see what happens over there. So very interesting. So where do we expect the Biffo to be? Oh, it's hard to pick, I'd say. Surely there has to be action around this area with the Spanish. Um, I think my personal belief is that the pirates are going to have to answer the cry of their nation. Not that they have a nation, but you know what I mean. If the current game mechanics, they do. And they're going to have to do something about this. Um, there is a mentality at the moment. There's some great stuff that I'll cover in Scuttlebutt going on in the with the new content coming out with sailors and different wind speeds and completely new port capture mechanics, completely new diplomacy and war mechanics. Uh, to some extent, that might undermine the port play that we currently have because everybody knows it's going to change or it might make more craziness happen. I think it's going to make more craziness happen. People are going to become less precious over land holdings and more hunting out the PvP. With the new not being able to capture fleets anymore, uh, first rates are more precious, but they are also almost a sort of mutually assured destruction weapon. If you put 25 Santis in a port, it's very, very hard for someone to shift. If you can hold it for a week, you've maybe got time to build a backup fleet. So I am expecting the pirates to go on a homicidal rampage around the Bahamas. Not sure whether or not they'll try for Cuba or go the Bahamas first. You see, Cuba will allow them to use their deep water fleets. A lot of this is shallow water fleets. Shallow water fleets is a great normalizer. It's very easy for a clan to get 25 golden mercuries together. Uh, it's much harder to get 25 golden santis together. Pirate Bay, will we finally see the fall of Carlisle? If I was a betting man, and I am, I wouldn't be betting on it. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's an attempt this week. We shall see. Our cloggy friends have expanded their holdings here. Um... And I think they're here to stay for a while. I can't see them getting wiped in a week. I think this area here is going to be a real hot spot. I've got no idea what the Swedes are going to do. Um, I've no idea how strong the Swedes are. I know they've been having big fights with France. And I've seen the French fleets in action against the Brits. So I can only assume the Swedes have a reasonable fleet. And the Danes are now free of having to help their... French buddies out and I saw the fleet that took Arves. Uh, I think they lost about six or seven first rates but they killed about 10 or 12 British first rates. I've been given screenshots of that one and uh, there'll be a video up of that kicking around soon so that'll be interesting. So let's have a little look at the tally of splinters sail and blood. 
And it makes for interesting reading, it has to be says. The Brits have scrambled to the top of the pops, although the Americans, who were second for a long time, uh, have an absolute rip-snorter of a week with a 15-port gain. The Pirates have had their number of ports halved in two weeks. So the cost of holding Carlisle has told on the greater sort of catalogue of pirate ports. The Spanish probably were 10 ports up at one point during the week. They ended up being a port down. Um, the Dutch only made a port, but I think it was the Dutch who gave a couple of ports away to let the Swedes in. Um, the French broke even, which given the position they were in midweek will probably be a huge relief. Um, the Danes lost a single port. Um, that's probably the expansion on Haiti that did that with the Brits snaffling a couple of ports. And the Swedes have increased those, their holdings um, by a smidgen. Uh, so that is where we are at the end of week six. Um, I think we're all mad. I think it's brilliant. I salute it. I'm part of it. I love it. I'm really looking forward to next week. Um, I've got my own first right now. I'm itching to use it. Um, it's a bastard trying to do anything around Pirate Bay, Jamaica at the moment. Um, just to let you know, last week I put out my um, Ingermanland review. Um, and it took me two and a half hours to actually get to the mission. Because either I would leave port and there'd be too many pirates for me to risk it or I'd leave port and be involved in two or three battles to get to my mission. Um, even doing a trader jump to push my sh my one of my ships off to a nether port, um, I jumped into a Le Gros Venture with contraband goods, thinking, excellent, I'll capture it and send my Ingerman land to a safer part of the map. Not that I have any ports in safer parts of the map. All my ports are in the war zones. Uh, but safer than Jamaica, which is anywhere. Um, and I went in there, I'm halfway through spanking the uh, Gross Venture when two pesky pirates jump in and I have to biff them off um, and I, I did okay actually, I, I managed to run away and I don't know if one of them sunk but he was damn close to sinking. Um, I don't think he sunk but he was, he was definitely taking water. Uh, but yeah, two and a half hours just to get to my mission and my mission's like less than a thumb's distance from my port in Jamaica, pesky pirates. Um, I'm having to do my videos at stupid o'clock now in order to uh, have any chance of doing that. However, that's my problem, not your problem. It's the end of the video I'm sharing. That's it for Letter to the King, episode six. Let's see what next week brings. I think it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm expecting pirate mayhem. I'm expecting the Swedes to do something. I don't know what the Danes and the Spanish are gonna do. And I know it is going to be a heap of fun. Hit like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you on the ocean, and I will catch you.